Welcome back to JD Riffs and Reviews. Today we're going to be checking out the Diodario Eclipse Tuner. Today's going to be a quick video. We're just going to really be looking at the accuracy of this headstock tuner that does not use a microphone, to the best of my knowledge, and there is no signal coming from my instrument. We're gonna be matching it up against the standard Boss TU3 on three different scenarios. My Stratocaster on the neck pickup tuned from C sharp to D. We're going to see how it handles that sort of tuning. We're also gonna look on how it will tune on the low string going down to an A. That's the same A that you would have on a standard tuning bass guitar. Then lastly, we are going to look at how it fares on bass itself, because I know even the TU3 struggles with some of those low open notes, like a low D in this case. So let's check it out and see how it goes. Okay, so this is gonna be a little tricky, but what I'm gonna try to do is show you as I tune each string, the little Eclipse tuner versus the TU3 in the background. Right now my guitar is just a complete mess. It should be about C sharp tuning. We're gonna tune it up to D for the first couple strings. So right there, the Eclipse is actually saying I'm a little sharp where the TU3 is saying I'm spot on. sharp and always try to tune going up to the note it just helps with the the wraps but with this particular guitar with the lock and tuners you don't really have to worry about that so you can see that string was way out Now that high D. Now let's see how close we are. Close enough for rock and roll, as my guitar teacher used to say. Now, what about those low, low tunings? So something my band likes to do is play in a tuning popularized by, I believe, Tool and Mastodon definitely is where we got it from. Basically, you're going to take your low string, in this case a D, and tune it down to an A. If you were doing in standard tuning, you would be tuning down to a B. So if you think of it like you're going to tune to a seven string tuning, but you're going to skip your sixth string. So what ends up happening is your power chord shape ends up being an octave shape, and you get a lot of cool, interesting things that way. Problem is, tuning this to that A you are tuning basically to the A of a bass. So let's see how it works. And I can tell you I have problems with every tuner on this one. And you can see even the TU3 is having trouble grabbing that note on where it should be. The TU3 is saying I'm flat, but the Eclipse is actually saying I'm in tune. So let's see if we match 10th fret up. It's close, but it's gonna sound wonky. Let's try to match the harmonic to the TU3. So 
So now the Eclipse is saying, I'm pretty close, I'm a little sharp it looks like, but if we match the 10th the fret, that's really close. Try it out. It's still off a little bit. But it's pretty close. So now we're actually going to take a look at my bass. This bass is also tuned a half step lower than I normally would have it. So let's see how it matches up with the TU3. Now it feels like the Eclipse kind of having a hard time reading the low, low note. I don't know if you can see that. Go up to a C here. This should be more in its range. So now let's do a quick check to see how well this is in tune. So as you can tell, it works all right on bass. It's a little shoddy. Uh, I personally think it'd be easier to tune to your 12th fret harmonic and use the TU3, and as you can see, I'm a little flat there. And I wouldn't use it for any setup work, but in a pinch, the Eclipse is a good tuner that can help you just quickly jam around the house. Well, I know tuners aren't the most interesting thing in the world, but thank you for watching, because they are incredibly important. If you don't think so, go check out that video of Eddie Van Halen in North Carolina when he, his guitar is completely out of tune playing to a keyboard track and it did not go very well. But that's a story for another day. If you liked, make sure you share and subscribe. Hit that like button if you do. Remember, the more attention we can build, the more videos we can afford to do, and it makes things a lot easier within YouTube itself. You might not see me for the next couple weeks on this channel, but I'm going to be having across the next month or so a whole slew of new content coming out with Old Bones, with my new project, Witches, a whole bunch of stuff coming across the Rocket Sauce Studios brand, and hopefully you'll be able to check that out. I'll include some links in the description below. So that's it for this time. I don't know when I'll see you again, but hopefully it'll be soon. And thank you for watching JD Riffs and Reviews. See you next time.